Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about NEO, Enphase, and Lucid Stock. We will be analyzing four main articles to where the first one is titled, Street Sees Over 60% Upside in NEO Stock. So we'll be weighing the risk to reward ratio to see if NEO is still a good buying opportunity for investors who want phenomenal upside. After that, we'll move on and talk about end phase regarding how they just began their IQ battery shipments to Western Europe and how they plan to expand their overall market share across multiple companies. We will also be discussing their overall current price, where the share price could be headed in the future, and what you need to know about this company, as well as my own personal opinion on end phase energy. Lastly, we'll discuss how Lucid Group has experienced a surge of two thousand one hundred and forty three percent in their overall revenue during the last year we'll discuss what this means for the future of this company and how bullish or bearish i am on their future growth prospects so for more videos just like this one remember to go and annihilate that like button right now comment your thoughts down below subscribe if you are new and without further ado let's jump right into today's stories neo is an electric vehicle company located over in china and they have continued to impress overall investors which is why many investors have put NEO on a watch list. Many investors are keeping their radars up for NEO pertaining to their amazing future growth potential. For instance, the company currently trades for just $9 per share, but the median price target from experts believe the company could surge up to $14.73 over the next 12 months. That would imply a hefty 63.5% potential upside over the next year, but it gets even better. Even if we take the most bearish low-end critic of this company, the stock price still has phenomenal upside of $10. But that's not all. Out of the 10 analysts which were surveyed, these professionals have 6 buy ratings and 4 hold ratings while none of these experts say to sell this company. Meaning that since these analysts are so bullish, maybe the higher end price prediction for this company is more accurate. Meaning that the company could surge from $9 all the way up to $25 over the short term. And here's why professionals think this could happen. The company recently delivered around 31,041 vehicles in the first quarter of 2023, clocking in their overall growth rate of 20.5%. Now, this number is supposed to absolutely balloon and expand during quarter three of 2023, to where the second half of 2023, their revenues, delivery, manufacturing capacity are supposed to enter a new phase of efficiency. Experts in this space believe the company could surge by 70% in their overall efficiencies and capacities, thus leading to higher revenues and lowering their overall net losses so the company is put further toward profitability. On top of that, NEO is also setting up their third generation of power swapping stations over in China. Their power swapping stations allows NEO customers to be able to swap out their batteries faster than a charging station could charge the batteries. Even though NEO does have access to charging stations and chargers, their power swapping stations is their main competitive advantage in my opinion. That's why the company already has around 1300 power swapping stations and they plan to add an additional 1000 stations this year alone. NEO's vehicles are very high quality, they're cheaper than a lot of their competition, and with their power swapping stations, this gives them a huge competitive advantage, at least technologically, which is why it does seem that this company is going to be a long-term winner. But there is a major risk for this company. We have geopolitical risks, because if anything were to happen between the United States and China, Chinese stocks would absolutely plummet to the ground, which would include a NEO. On top of that, you have to invest into an ADR share or a shell company to get access to invest into NEO because it's a foreign company. You're also going to have to pay a very small teeny tiny ADR fee and on top of that the competition is fierce over in China from competitors like BYD, Li Auto, Tesla as well as other EV automakers. So the electric vehicle space is filled with a lot of competition. I personally like NEO. I have around a 2-3% to allocation to this company because I believe the company is set to surge during the second half of of 2023 because that's what professionals and analysts and experts predict and I can't wait for that to happen on top of the company's also trading at a very cheap share price of just $9 meaning that their accounting ratio
ratios are very cheap, making them a better buying opportunity than the majority of other electric vehicles on the market right now, which is why I personally am bullish on NEO, at least right now. Things are going to get worse before they get better, because like I said, during quarter one and quarter two, we're going to see a lot of volatility in the overall demand for electric vehicles, as well as the NEO share price. But during the second half of 2023, that's when we're going to see NEO's true growth. So stay tuned for that on new updates, and I can't wait for this company to absolutely pop according to analysts' expectations. Moving right along here, let's talk about Enphase Energy, ticker symbol ENPH. Enphase Energy recently announced that they have shipped their IQ batteries to a plethora of customers over in Western Europe. This allows this company the opportunity to expand their overall relatively large market, especially over in the European market regarding solar energy energy. The solar market seems to be a keyword now because a lot of investors seem to be wanting to invest into green energy companies such as Enphase. And as Enphase further penetrates the overall global market, it's going to increase their overall financials and make this company more fundamentally solid. Currently, they're looking to expand their overall battery storage market over in these various sub-markets, which has allowed the company's net revenues to increase by 69% year over year in 2022, which was driven by a 103% increase in Enphase's IQ battery megawatt hour shipments. And again, they are further penetrating the overall market with these IQ batteries, meaning that their future revenues are also going to be extremely strong as they acquire even more market share in the solar space. According to Allied Market Research, the global battery storage market is anticipated to grow at a compounding annual growth rate on average of 20.1% from now until 2031. Meaning that if you can identify a company in this space early and you're willing to hold this company for the next five to 10 years, you could experience a large payout and phenomenal growth over the long term, even though the short term could be quite volatile. In this regard, Enphase continues to strengthen their overall battery production and widen their overall battery portfolio while they plan to introduce enhanced versions of their IQ batteries and other solar products. The company has also planned lineups for their fourth generation batteries already, meaning that Enphase is more than anticipated to take advantage of this phenomenal trend in the solar space from now until 2031. If you want to know some other solar companies, feel free to do your own research and look into Solar Edge, ticker symbol SEDG, Canadian Solar, ticker symbol CSIQ, and Sun Power, ticker symbol SPWR. Remember, this is a newer market space, meaning that in the short term it's going to be very volatile, but make sure to do your own research so you can identify some of the best companies to invest into to hold for the long term. All in all, it seems that Enphase is pretty well positioned. But what are my personal comments on this company and do I own Enphase? Well, yes, I do own Enphase, but I don't own much of it. I only have a 1% allocation to this particular company, and I'll tell you why. Recently, the company reached a $191 share price, while bearish professionals think this company should be worth around $218 per share, while bullish positive investors believe this company could surge all the way up to $365 over the next 12 months, meaning that this company technically is already considered undervalued according to these analyst estimates. Out of 37 analysts, 24% of them say to hold the company and the rest say that this company is a phenomenal buying opportunity, especially if you plan to hold this company over the long term. Over the past month, Enphase has lost around 11.29% of their overall value, which just makes them a better buying opportunity in my opinion. Wall Street is also looking forward to their new positive earnings results, which are currently forecasted to come in at an earnings per share of $1.20, while their overall year-over-year -year revenue growth, which would equate to a 55.84% increase year-over-year, while compared to their revenue growth, which they're supposed to bring in around $720.53 million, which would mean a 63.28% growth year over year. This company is rapidly expanding. 55% and 63% are huge leaps and bounds for EPS as well as their overall revenues, making this company very intriguing for investors. For the full year, they're anticipated to bring in $5.46 on an EPS basis, which is extremely impressive, while their revenues are currently forecasted and projected to come in at around $3.17 billion, equating to an 18% and a 36% increase, respectively. 
But what do I think about this company? Well, I would actually agree with Zach's rank, surprisingly, because I don't normally agree with them. They have a rating and ranking system that ranges from 1, which is a strong buy, to 5, which is a strong sell. And on this spectrum, Enphase ranks as a 3, meaning that this is a holding opportunity right now. The reason why both Zach's rank and I both say that this is a holding opportunity right now is due to their very high forward P.E. ratio or their price to earnings ratio, which comes in at 35.5. If we compare that to their overall industry, their industry average is only 27.06, meaning that investors are paying a premium. I personally would wait for Enphase to cool off a little more before investing, and that's when I would change my hold rating to a buy rating. But overall, if you plan to hold this company for the long term, then best of luck, and this company could give you phenomenal returns. Just make sure that you buckle yourself in because I do believe this company will fall in their share price during the short term because they are trading at a premium compared to their overall industry, especially in regards to the PE ratio, which is their price to earnings ratio that we looked at, because ideally we would want them to be trading below with their industry average in this regard, giving us an even better buying opportunity. Lastly, let's round out the video with another electric vehicle company named Lucid Group. Lucid shareholders are actually pretty happy right now considering that the LCID stock price has increased by 21% since the last quarter in their overall share price. Now this is despite the company dropping by 66% after a less than impressive earnings report and the reason why we are seeing this 21% surge is because the sell-off was too aggressive according to me and many other professionals. I also want to make investors aware that Lucid Group is not a profitable company which is why investors investors are more focused on their overall revenue. And the revenue has been very impressive considering that they grew their revenue by 2,143% over the last year. So if they can maintain their overall fast revenue growth, this could lead more investors to buying this overall company. However, I have actually lowered my overall exposure to Lucid where it only makes up half of 1% of my overall portfolio and here's why that is. According to the most recent recent results, yes, their revenues are absolutely amazing. Look on screen how their overall revenues are anticipated to scale from now until 2025. At the end of 2025, the company could be bringing in around $6.394 billion. However, now let's add earnings to this chart, and this is where it gets very risky. From 2023 to 2024, we actually see the earnings per share decrease. And then from 2024 onward, from 2025 and even 2026, we can see that their earnings start to climb back upwards, meaning that right now may not be a good time to invest into this company and instead wait till 2024 to invest into this company because from 2024 onward, it looks like that is when they're going to start making the most improvements regarding their revenues, earnings, free cash flow, as well as their cash flow from operation. Right now, the company isn't even anticipated to become profitable, most likely until the end of 2026 or even further down the road. And that is the most recent projections and metrics for this overall company, which is why I have lowered my overall exposure. However, clearly, I'm still going to keep my 0.5% allocation of this company and it's still on my watch list because after 2024 as you can see the revenues absolutely take off which is going to positively impact their overall earnings free cash flow and cash flow from operations i just don't want to see investors get burned by jumping in too early for this company but over the long term it seems that this could be a very intriguing investment even though i personally would rather invest into neo considering not only that it's cheaper but also their growth metrics are more current instead of waiting for the future but i would love to hear your thoughts down below. Don't forget to go and annihilate that like button. Tell me what you think of NEO stock and FACE stock as well as Lucid Group stock or LCID stock. Subscribe if you are new, become a member if you want to support me personally, and I will see you in the next YT video.